Salut everyone In this video, we're gonna be talking about Bluetooth, and especially Bluetooth on Linux. I don't know why, but like the word Bluetooth sounds really weird in my mind. When I say it, like when it comes out of my mouth, like I don't know. Something is weird, uh, I'm not on drugs. But I found this JOL here. Okay? And this JOL, come, come on camera. Yes, you see this JOL here? I'm kind of spoiling the video. But this piece of hardware is dirt cheap and is actually incredible on Linux. So we're going to talk about it. Are you ready? Let's get into it. As always, let's start with a little bit of context. At this point, you are watching this video and you are like, Air Max, I already run Linux. I have Bluetooth working perfectly on my machine. Why should I watch this video? Well, you should not. But what you should do, you could give a thumbs up. You could write a commentary below like this video say something funny say something nice just to make sure like the algorithm is actually like pushing my content my channel through youtube it will be really helpful and uh, yes if everything works on your hands have a good rest of your day and thanks for the comment and the thumbs up i appreciate it dude <laughs> but uh, if you had issue or if you are just curious about what happened to me regarding like bluetooth on linux Uh, you should definitely stay tuned. So, long story short, about this Asus motherboard, uh, which has a X870E chipset. This is the latest AMD chipset. And what happened is that most of those motherboard manufacturers, when they build their motherboard, they decide, right? What type of Wi-Fi modules they're going to use, what type of sound cards they're going to use, what type of chipset related to the sound card and also like what type of module they're going to use for the Bluetooth. And to my big surprise, as I mentioned in my long term review of the Asus ProArt 870E Creator Wi-Fi, you know, like such a fancy name and a, and a pretty big price. I noticed that, uh, well, Bluetooth was recognized, but was not functional. And I made some research. And not to my surprise, I was not the only one to have this issue. But to my surprise, I understood that the chipset itself was just too early. And because it was too early, we are in this position where I have the working chipset on paper that can just not run on Linux. So just to be clear, I'm not blaming anyone. I understand the process. And if you don't know how it works on Linux, users like you and I are actually building the code, integrating the latest like driver within the kernel. And sometimes it can take a lot of time. And at this particular moment with this particular hardware, well, it looks like it's not going to be integrated in the kernel anytime soon. So I had to find a solution. And the question that come back all the time when you are a Linux user is what type of hardware should I buy knowing that I need to check if it's compatible with Linux? The real question is, is it compatible with Linux? And man, this can be a, a crazy, like I would say, like uh, adventure. We, we all have been there when Uh, you know, we're using our stuff on Windows and you realize that switching to, to Linux, well, it doesn't work anymore. So I did my research and the first thing I was thinking about is like, where can I find a, a pretty like good resource of information related to Linux hardware compatibility on Internet? And the answer is like, there is none. And there is a lot. There is none. There is a lot. It's kind of contradictory, but you know what I'm getting, right? You have a lot of users who, who tested through the hardware on Linux and will share uh, their findings like I'm doing right now with you guys. But sometimes information is not really like findable. And sometimes there is like some websites who kind of like push some information related to hardware in general, but more at a higher level with a huge amount of data and a lot of feedbacks, kind of like a database. And for Wi-Fi and USB dongle, I discover this gem. So it's, it's on GitHub, it's called Moro NR slash USB dash Wi-Fi. And if you look at the description of this repo, the mission of this site is to provide educational information, review of USB Wi-Fi adaptator and link to specific adaptators that are known to perform well with Linux. 
So I'm going to put the link in the description below. This thing is a beast and also super active. You can see here, like he has been active like two weeks ago. So I won't be covering all the data from this website. It's actually insane. But I'm going to show you what were the recommendations specifically for the Bluetooth adaptator and what make me go toward like this specific one. So if you read the recommendation from this gentleman here, I've started this list because of my strong recommendation to Linux users to avoid USB slash Wi-Fi adaptators that include Bluetooth support. I've seen so many problems with combo adaptator over the years. There are technical reasons for the problems that users see with combo adaptator and problems happen on both Linux and Windows. I will explain this in detail on this page as I have time. Uh, it will take some time for this page to become uh, useful as we need. Uh, and I could certainly use partner to maintain this page, etc, etc. But it comes with these four recommendations there. And I went through all of them and I decided to go with a specific one. So first things first, what you can see here is like all those adaptators, they have the same chipset here. They all have the same main version of Bluetooth. So I, I, b before making this video, and I have to be honest with you, I had no idea what was the difference between Bluetooth 5.1 and Bluetooth 2. Like for me, like every Bluetooth was kind of the same, especially for my usage. But after another research, because yes, uh, Google is your friend. Fine, not this Google, but like Google search is your friend. Anyways, you know, I'm going there. You can see that the evolution of Bluetooth has been pretty major. And the Bluetooth 5 is actually the latest one. So by going with Bluetooth 5, you should be on paper solid. And you can see like the mass range is like 240 meters and the max speed is around like 50 megabytes per second, which is pretty cool. And you can tell like right away by just looking at this uh, little like table that you actually want Bluetooth 5. So if you guys are maybe like running Bluetooth 4 and you are struggling to, I don't know, transfer file or whatever, uh, you can see here like Bluetooth 5 give a pretty substantial like increase in terms of speed, almost doubling like Bluetooth 3 there. So yes, the recommendation is Bluetooth 5, <laughs> long story short. Now, if you look at each of those specific recommendations individually and all the hundreds of reviews I went through on Amazon, I landed on the head-up EPB3536. And yes, this is this one. I actually bought it and I did test it for more than two months, maybe three months. I don't know exactly, but... This is what I'm using in my PC right now. And I can tell you guys, this thing is a monster. And I'm going to explain my choice. The first point is this device is totally plug and play on Linux. You have no driver installation. You have nothing to do. And what you only need is to run your Linux operating system with a kernel superior to 5.14. So I'm going to tell you straight, guys. Uh, 5.14 was released in August 2021. I just double check on my over screen because I didn't want to make a mistake in terms of timing. But this kernel was released in August 2021. As I'm recording the video, we are in 2025. You should be golden. The second criteria I used was the price. This baby is only 10 USD. 10 USD, I repeat, is dirt cheap. So you buy it, $10, plug it, you are good to go. And the third criteria was the actual like shape and hardware like choice that the manufacturer did. And I want to be super clear with that because there is over model in the recommendation list like this one here. And the problem I have with this type of like shape is yes, they are more compact and they might not be as ugly as this one with a big antenna in the back. But what I noticed with those really like small device is that they become warm and they become like super toasty. And what I was scared is that while plugging this device in the back of my motherboard and keeping it like all the time to have Bluetooth all the time, it could become really warm and then damage my motherboard. So yeah, maybe I went a little bit far there. Maybe you want something more compact. But my co-recommendation is like avoid those. 
Okay, I don't want to take the risk of burning a really expensive motherboard uh, just for the aesthetic. And on top of that, this thing is behind my PC. It's maybe ugly, but I don't care because I know that the part which is going to get warm is the exterior part here. It the warmness, the warmness or the hotness, I don't know how to say it, but like it won't be within the plug itself. So my motherboard is safe. So yes, uh, you are on my main distro here, like the distro I daily drive every day. And if you go down there and you click on uh, the Bluetooth device here, bam, you're gonna see that my speaker and my PS4 uh, device are actually like set up there. And if I click on configure Bluetooth, everything is there, everything is working. I literally had nothing to do. It's just working out of the box. I paired all my device and I've been super happy about it. So a lot of you ask me since my release of the ASUS uh, ProArt motherboard Wi-Fi review, how did I fix my Bluetooth issue? Well, this is the one. Simple as that. Um, I'm, I'm sorry, like it took me so much time to, to actually like give you this little like review kind of or feedback towards the hardware because I just wanted to make sure that it was working nice. So this is not a sponsor video and I, I bought it with my own money. But the thing is when I put myself behind a product, I want to make sure it's actually working. And this one, like I've been testing it almost every day. Because I have this little like uh, Bluetooth speaker I plug when I want to listen to music without the, the IEM or I want to watch a YouTube video. And I do that a lot, actually. I, I, I use the Bluetooth a lot. And I have to say, guys, I've been super impressed. I can let the video play on my PC and take the speaker and go super far. And it still works. And uh, they give a range of like 100 meters. So my house is not uh, as big as that, you know, <laughs> to test it. Like I don't have a, a 100 meter, like uh, all the way out there or room or whatever. But uh, going through walls, no problem. Going through um, level within the house, no problem. This thing is actually awesome. Like this thing is super solid. And I just wanted to make sure like it, it was good enough. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to put an affiliate link in the description below uh, for uh, the one I recommend. So I definitely recommend this one. Uh, and uh, yeah, that's it. That's all, guys. If you want to help the channel, uh, if you need uh, a Bluetooth adapter for your Linux machine, if you need to upgrade, maybe because you, you want to have a better speed uh, of transfer. I, I don't really do like transfer with this thing, but just looking at the table of specification, uh, this one is uh, the best in class. Uh, yeah, just go get one. It's like 10 bucks. And it will help the channel if you use the affiliate link. That's it. That's all, guys. Thank you very much for watching. As always, uh, don't forget the thumbs up, the comment. And I want to thank again all the supporters of La Crème de la Crème Club who do it via PayPal, Patreon, or YouTube membership. You guys are the best. Thank you very much for your support. And see you in the next one. Bisous, bisous.